Researchers here in Australia at the university that my sister went to for many years had discovered a way to double the energy density of lithium batteries. Now, not quite double, but pretty close to double. They used an unusual ingredient in order to get lithium sulfur batteries to have an energy density which is essentially on par with the batteries from CATL. You know, CATL is condensed battery with an energy density of 400 watt hours per kilogram, which is being used in jumbo jets. Yeah, the same as those. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Guys, if you feel this video provides you value, then please subscribe as a member of the channel. It's great to have members on board and obviously it supports the channel. Really appreciate you. I'll put a link in the description below. The highest energy density batteries currently being used in aircraft right now are the condensed battery made by CATL. Now, those are pretty exotic batteries. Kate will say that they'll be in EVs within a few years time. However, they aren't cheap. They're relatively expensive. But a lot of people, including myself, believe there's many other options that will come into the market within the next few years as well to be rivals. And these other options will give electric cars a range of well over six, 700 miles easily, easily. I mean, think about this. If you doubled the energy density of, let's say the, the battery in the car that I have, the Xpeng G6, that would give it a range of easily, I'm talking 1,200 kilometers. So this is what we're looking at. And this is pretty amazing. We're going to see really fast charging. We're starting to see 600 kilowatt charging come out in various different electric cars in China. And we're going to see energy density like this. It's going to be the death knoll for internal combustion. Researchers at Monash University in Australia have developed ultra fast charging lithium sulfur batteries that are using an interesting ingredient to massively increase energy density. The newly developed batteries have around twice the energy density of lithium ion phosphate batteries. Now, to give you some context, they're not double the energy density of Tesla's 4680 battery or other batteries that are similar to that, they're, but they're you know not far off that. The 4680 battery is considered to be at a potentially around 260 watt hours per kilogram. These are 400. It's a huge difference. Lithium sulfur batteries um, have been talked about a fair bit, but the truth is they were actually invented two decades before lithium iron. 20 years before we had lithium iron batteries, we had lithium sulfur batteries. But the limitations of internal chemistries resulted in lithium sulfur batteries kind of not progressing in the same way that lithium iron batteries did. Among the shortcomings or the problems with lithium sulfur batteries are reduced power delivery and fewer charge cycles. So the biggest problem was the longevity, right? They just wouldn't last for long enough. This is mostly due to the anode and the cathode materials used in the battery degrading too quickly. Since sulfur serves as the cathode and lithium iron as the anode, lithium is not redeposited on the anode during the recharging process. Instead, the resulting chemical deposits degrade the anode and the electrolyte, slowing down recharging times and power output as well. Inspired by the chemistry of betadine, a commonly used antiseptic, I don't know about you guys, but I use betadine on my cuts. I use them for my kids as well. Betadine here in Australia is commonly used just to like clean out your infections and it's cheap. But based on that, researchers at Monash University in Victoria, in Melbourne, found a way to improve the charge and discharge rates of lithium sulfur batteries. The antiseptic actually contains something called PVP or polyvinyl pyrrolidine. No idea how you pronounce that. I gave it a shot. This is a synthetic polymer that can react with other molecules to form compounds with different properties. Using PVP as a catalyst in lithium sulfur batteries accelerates chemical reactions, facilitating faster charge and discharge rates. Our catalyst has significantly enhanced the C rate performance of lithium sulfur batteries demonstrated in early proof of concept prototype cells, said the professor at Monash University in charge of the research. With commercial scaling and larger cell production, this technology can deliver an energy density of 400 watt hours per kilogram. In comparison, lithium ion batteries today range from around 140 watt hours per kilogram for lower energy density LFP 
up to 250 watt hours per kilogram. The higher energy density of lithium sulfur batteries could give EVs easily a range of a thousand miles. If you think about it, if you put say a 100 kilowatt hour battery into a Tesla Model 3 today, you'd be looking at close to a thousand miles with an energy density of 400 watt hours per kilogram. Now, do you need that? Of course not. You just put a smaller battery in and it'll be cheaper and lighter. And considering the Tesla Model 3 is already lighter than a Mercedes C-Class equivalent, you could be looking at really lightweight electric cars. I think in 10 years time from now, EVs will be much lighter than internal combustion. What makes lithium sulfur batteries particularly remarkable is that they can achieve quick discharge rates. This makes it well suit them well suited for applications requiring dynamic performance, such as aviation, where batteries must handle high C rates during takeoff and efficiently switch to low C rates during cruising. To give you some explanation on that, one of the reasons why the Tesla Model 3 performance, which is manufactured in China, um, it has less power than the Tesla Model 3 performance made in the US is simply because of the C rate on the batteries. So the batteries that go into the Model 3 performance in China, they have they are actually a an LG Chem battery. So those batteries are not capable of putting out as much power, peak output as the batteries from Panasonic that go into the US made Model 3. So same motors, right? You think both cars have the same power? Well, they should, but they don't because the C rates are the really different batteries made by different manufacturers. So here's the issue. One of the big problems with airplanes is they need enormous amounts of power to get off the ground. Now, when they're in the air, they don't need anywhere near as much power as what they needed to get off the ground. So the C rate of the battery is very important for this kind of situation for aircraft. Now, not only does the addition of the catalyst reduce charging times as well, but it also makes the batteries safer as they were previously prone to short circuits and fires. One of the reasons why lithium sulfur didn't do so well back when it was first invented. Lithium sulfur batteries are also environmentally more sustainable since they do not require cobalt, of course, like lithium ion phosphate batteries. And they're really, that should mean in theory, they would be cheaper to manufacture because cobalt uh, is not cheap. Imagine an electric vehicle that can travel from Melbourne to Sydney on a single charge or potentially something like San Francisco to LA. Or also imagine a smartphone that could charge in a couple of minutes. We're on the cusp of making this a reality, said Peter Jovanovich, a research fellow at Monash University and co-lead author of the paper, which published the research findings in the journal Advanced Engineering Materials. Now, will these batteries take off? Will they literally be an aircraft in electric cars within, say, five years' time? They could be, because these kind of batteries could be much cheaper to manufacture than solid state batteries. If you think about it, they're essentially just taking the batteries we have today and putting different chemistry in them. It's actually very, very simple. Solid state batteries are far, far more complex than that. And a lot, a lot more has to go on. So I think it's probably potentially more likely to see batteries like this in cheaper vehicles. You know, today we see in the cheaper EVs, they have more affordable lithium ion phosphate batteries with fairly low energy density. These are the kind of batteries we could very likely see in more affordable EVs in the future, right? They don't need cobalt. They should be cheap to manufacture. Sulfur is not expensive. Lithium sulfur batteries should replace LFP batteries potentially within the next 10 to 15 years. But if you ask artificial intelligence, that would tell you that actually sodium batteries are set to replace LFP. There's many different options coming to market. It's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. I'm sure some of you have an opinion on which batteries are going to take over the market. Let me know what you think in the comments. Mm -hmm.